welcome to another M&P production. This is Memorial Day weekend and we wanted to do something to tribute to the men and women that served our country and paid the ultimate sacrifice. Um, we all need to stop and think while we're at our barbecues or going to the range or spending time with our family that uh, some people are, are not with their family because they paid the ultimate sacrifice. So. Just bear that in thought and keep them in our in our hearts and our minds and we're very thankful for what we have in this beautiful country of ours and so we thought we would honor them with some World War II U.S. firearms. First is U.S. 30 caliber M1 adopted 1936 made about four million during World War II, served on through the 1950s until replaced by the M14. 30-06 caliber is the commercial designation. Army always called it 30 caliber. This particular gun is a Korean War era M1 made by Springfield Armory. There was numerous makers, uh, Springfield Armory, uh, International Harvester, Winchester, H&R, I think that's about it, um, beautiful guns, this General Patton nailed it when he said greatest battle implement ever devised, they're just great rifles, I've shot high power matches with them, they can be very accurate and they're extremely reliable, and I just can't say enough good things about the M1. If you have an opportunity to buy one, recommend going to the CMP and looking what they offer. Uh, it's a government charter that runs the CMP and by mandate, U.S. Army has to give them surplus uh, 22 caliber and 30 caliber rifles. They've managed to get 45 1911s in the mix here lately. So CMP is a great thing. Look it up. Got to jump through a few hoops. But it's worth it. This is a CMP rifle. Next is my favorite. Matt's favorite. My favorite too. M1 carbine. This is an M1A1 with the paratrooper stock. 30 caliber carbine. 15 shot magazine. Later they came out with it. I shot this group at 100 yards with the carbine at a hundred yards from a bench rest. So little guns can shoot pretty good. Don't ever let them tell you you can't hit nothing with a carbine. But uh, this particular one, like I said, is an M1A1 in the paratrooper folding stock. Not the most rugged stock ever designed, but it worked and it holds up pretty good for us. Um, I enjoy shooting it. What about you? I really enjoy this this M1 carbine, uh, para, the paratrooper variant. It, it's you know it, it's it's meant for skinny people. It's it's it doesn't have a lot of weight to it, but it carries a nice, good, solid round. Yeah, yeah. And it delivers a. Punch. They introduced them to uh, replace the pistol to give to um, rear area troops or frontline troops who were manning uh, a machine gun or a mortar or driving a truck or. Their main job was doing something else, and, but they needed a weapon and a pistol. We all know is pretty much useless until the guy's on top of you. Needed something potent, and at about five and a half pounds, this is no more trouble to carry than a 45, and gave them a lot more firepower. And it became so popular that frontline troops used them, officers used them. If you were, you know, in, in extremely popular in the Pacific because it most of the fighting was close range so a carbine was desired over the other stuff you could carry more ammunition shoot faster um, then one had its role to play of course with distance and more accurate fire but it was a beautiful mix of the M1 carbines and M1 grams nobody had us beat on infantry weapons during World War II and the main thing is, you know, sure, the Germans came up with some 
great stuff, STG 44 Before, and all yeah. that stuff. Too little, too late, who cares? We got these in the cans of our troops and made six million of them and got them there. And, you know, so. All right, what's next for me? The 1911. 1911. EA1. No, this is a 19, straight up, 1918 manufactured Colt, 1911. This is what they call Black Army. Most of its finish is worn off. Still in excellent mechanical condition. Shoots well. Super reliable. Hard hitting. It's a classic. Everybody knows about this gun. Um, they, in 1920s or 30s, they adopted the 1911A1. Had a few features, arch and mainspring housing, cutouts around the trigger, shorter trigger, longer safety so it went and pinch your hand. But, great gun. Great gun. Got an original lanyard with this one. Well, you also see this gun in war movies as well. You know, it's accurately depicted. So, this, oh, yeah. this gun is a, like a... Oh, yeah, it's, this was it. You know... You sometimes this see this gun it. in pulp culture, so it's... Used them in Vietnam. Yeah. Hell, the Marines are still issued uh, some super duper what, M45. I don't know what they call it. A hundred years old, still on kicking. Yep, yep. You're not, you're not, you're not underarmed when you got one of these. Hey, let's shoot some of them, all right? Sounds good. Please like, please subscribe. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments. I'll be happy to answer it. Mm. Yeah. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, we're going to sign off here and go to the range and let you enjoy videos of us shooting. Enjoy your Memorial Day weekend. Take a minute. Think about our men and women that paid the ultimate sacrifice. And uh, think about those that are serving now and those that have served in the past. And thank you. We thank you. Bye.